The Gojaris are the Star Wars Galactic Battleground civilization of Age of Empires 2. Now, if you don't know, back in the early 2000s, Ensemble Studios licensed out the Genie Editor they used for Age 1 and Age 2 to LucasArts to make a Star Wars version of Age of Empires. And one of the unique features of that game was the Animal Nursery, where players could take their Banthas or their Nerfs, which are basically pig or sheep-like herdable animals, and instead of eating them, garrison them in the Animal Nursery and they would generate food over time. So now as we get to this new Age 2 expansion, the Gojaras have that ability with their mill. They can take their pigs, their sheep, and their other herdables, and the pigs or sheep with 100 food will generate 3.5 food per minute, and if you had a cow with 150 food, then that would generate 5.25 food per minute. So it's 3.5 food per 100 garrison food per minute. And this sieve starts with two berry bushes under the TC. So what players normally do, you build the mill, you put all of your sheep in it, and then you take berries and chop your straggler trees until you have that 100 wood you need again to build the lumber camp. But this is a team game. And as we see, players normally start with eight sheep, but Red's teammates, we have Lix over here, is sending him pigs. <laughs> yes, his teammates are going to be slinging him extra pigs to garrison in that mill. And mills, they can only hold 10 sheep at a time, so he's going to be building a second mill. That is, two mills before even building a lumber camp. He's just going to be chopping those stragglers for a while for wood, and putting all of his team sheep inside of these two mills. You see, it's three minutes in the game, and he already has 14 sheep uh, garrisoned in there, and he's got four more coming. So, <laughs> throughout this game, he's going to have eight sheep inside of those two mills generating food for him. I mean, 18 sheep generating food for him. Now that will be quite the nice boost huh. to... I don't know who Red actually is. I guess uh, must be a scruffy looking nerf herder, but uh, I don't recognize Red or Orange, but of course this is one of the expert games from the uh, Chinese players. They play some 4v4s fairly often. We have Yo, Paladin, and Bad Koala, along with Orange on the opposite team. And here we'll have Stray Dog, Lix, Tim, and red. Not doing the standard warm and cool colors, just going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight as their uh, team colors. But that is a good 18 pigs inside of those mills. And honestly, this is probably something that could become pretty common on Arena. I know there is the Tootin Farm Sling. Maybe I'll try to find a game of that to show off sometime, but the Gurjara Sheep Sling could definitely become an interesting strategy. I know some people have suggested at some point you put them in the mill at the beginning of the Dark Age, then you ungarrison them to take them. Is in the long run, that's not really too much food, at least if you only have eight of them in there. And sometimes the faster boost from taking the sheep could be useful. But of course, you'll just be using that camel scout to push in these ibexes. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on red throughout this game to see how efficient that economy is. Still even has the forage bushes left, just we'll be hunting that boar. I guess one bad thing about the forage bushes is they kind of block your boar positioning. You can't saturate it with as many bills as you normally could if you have the forage bushes there. <laughs> I'll have to finish that one off in order to get to it. Anyway, we have some Xing in the middle as players are chasing a scout about. I have this green scout being chased by purple and gray. Uh, Camel Scout really shines in the Feudal Age at chasing down the other scouts. It just has such a big attack bonus against them. Uh, will Lix make it back to Tim's base? This is where Tim's got to lock the gate and say, No, Lix, I'm not letting you bring their scouts into my base. I don't know how the players chose or randomed or picked civs, but we will have a Vikings flank on one side with a Turks flank on the other with Stray Dog and Tim as the flanks. Then Lix will be a Tootin's pocket, and then of course we have Red as this Gorjara's pocket, as he's just finishing pushing in those Ibexes there. And then on the other side, we will have Bad Koala as the Dravidians, another one of the expansion sieves. I have no idea what they're going to do, but that will be that uh, flank. That's Dravidian and another Turk flank, so Turk mirror on this flank. I don't know if they're going to go for Janissaries or Cav Archers, but we're going to have another scout 
being chased down as now it's Tim's turn to be focused by the other team. And anyway, we'll have a Poles pocket from Paladin. Paladin, not going to be able to make Paladins, but will of course be making Cavaliers and probably some Winged Hussars. And finally, we will have Yo as the Khmer. So lots of Elephant Civs, Khmer, Dravidians, and potentially Gurjars. Or do Gurjars even have Elephants? I'm forgetting now. They have Camels. Yeah, they, they have really good Camels, that's what they have. And they have Elephant Archers. But their Elephants don't have bonuses like the Bengalis or the Dravidians would. But they, they have insanely good camels. They train faster, they can be cheaper with their unique tech to cost less food. They also get extra melee armor after another unique tech. The team bonus is that the camels train faster, and they just have extra bonus attack. But this is Arena, and nowadays people people trush on Arena. So we're going to see both Viking and Dravidian flanks getting into a little scuffle here. Militia coming out for Bad Koala, and both players will be bumping out archers as I'm sure we'll have some towers coming up shortly, or some villagers. There we go, there's the first tower, looking to push through walls. Now Blacksmith coming up for Bad Koala. He'll be looking to get fletching out for his archers. As the spearmen got trapped inside, until the scout opens the gate. And he'll be trying to build a counter tower, and already has an archer out to start poking at those bills who are building the tower. But archer also out for Stray Dog. And Camel Scout here, actually, that is... Uh, It'll keep enemy scouts away, but won't be as good against archers as the spearmen. Just has a load of HP on it. Oop, archer goes down to the tower and builds garrison inside. And yeah, here's the downside of building the tower adjacent to the wall. That, yeah, it's closer, but it also means that the enemy can send their vills forward to knock it down themselves. And nice little trick there, we see Bad Koala trying to trap the villagers in, didn't get that last piece of wall down in time. But he should be winning this tower fight here. Doesn't look like there's any action on the other side. We see Market and Blacksmith from Tim as he is on some stone, so probably some Janissaries. And from Orange we see Gold and the same thing on the stone. Market and a blacksmith, so both of them will be going for Janissaries as he's sending more over to stone. And this tower fight should be won by Cyan. So bad koala. Now the Dravidians do get 200 wood when they advance to the next age. But in an extended feudal war, the Vikings with their free wheelbarrow, as they get their farms down, should probably start to take a bit of an eco leave, as we still don't have any farms from bad koala. Yes! Looks like there must have been a pause, and oh, look at this, our Gurjara's player, powered by the 18 sheep economy, is building a stable forward to help out with this push. Now, of course, they don't get knights, they do get Shravamsh riders. And tries to put down a siege workshop, but uh, <laughs> his teammate's blocking it. And they will get those elephant rams. As the archers are trying to take out that palisade. So it will be a... 2v1 against Bad Koala here. As we see, Yo is just putting down another TC. And we'll be making some knights, but knights probably not that helpful against the Gurjaras when that camel scout automatically becomes a uh, camel. So already a counter to knights. And also these Shravamsh riders, I don't think Capture Rage really displays them properly. Oh, actually it does. It shows the bar now. Yeah, so when they have that bar filled, they can dodge five arrows. And then it'll recharge over time. There's no animation when they dodge, the arrows just don't hit them. But here we have some knights. Knights should do well against the Shravamsh Rider, I believe. Yeah, the knights have more attack and some actual melee armor. But not as well against the camels. The archers will need to come here and need to have archers targeting camels, knights targeting Shravamsh Riders and other archers. And here come two armored elephants. Now these things are basically rams, but in elephant form. The differences involving them are when you have monks, you still need to be adjacent to convert them, but you don't need redemption. And they also have a bit of, uh, a bit more attack. So those elephants actually, if they get the jump on archers or on melee units, actually can fight back a little bit, unlike rams. 
especially when they get their splash damage going. You upgrade them once to Siege Elephants instead of needing Capped Ram, Siege Ram. And they also benefit from Blacksmith upgrades. So here we are, Knight's trying to get the Scorpion, but now the Elephants... You see, this is something that a Ram couldn't do. The Elephant's able to push back the Archers just because it's able to attack them a bit. Even if it doesn't attack, just the threat of it running towards them and eventually getting a hit helps take them out of the fight. And they're able to, with these camels, with their extra attack, clean up the knights. Archers couldn't really be involved to target the camels when they had to run away from the elephants. And now it's time to start ramming down those walls. We see after that forward aggression, second TC now being added in from red. Three TCs here from Lix. Four TCs here from Paladin. He's really going to be using that those full varks for his economy. And it's two TCs for Orange, one for Tim, both going for Janissaries. And we see this. No upgrades on the Knights, just one stable as Yo is adding in more TCs. He's doing the classic uh, T West Ornlu play of booming while your teammate dies. And these camels now are running around Bad Koala's base. Now, both Stray Dog and Bad Koala are stuck in the Feudal Age, but I think as time goes on, the Viking extra farming, uh, that free wheelbarrow, should help pay off and get Stray Dog up faster, especially since his eco is not the one being pressured. A second range, and now Tower is being added in for Bad Koala as Yo is sending a villager over. See that Yo is taking full advantage in his economy of those Khmer farms, just plopping them wherever he wants to plop them down outside those houses. But now Bad Koala's range will go down, and I don't know what he can do to defend against this. He can get a big mass of archers, perhaps, but it's still going to be an uphill battle against armored elephants. Trying to get a stone wall up, but even then, that wouldn't stop the armored elephants. There's a tower by the TC just to try to keep the TC alive, but those archers are going to get in before that wall goes up. We'll get another tower in the back. Now he can do nothing but tower. And I think he's going to be dying. We see... I don't see any vills being run from him. He's just putting everything back into the TC. That tower will go down immediately to the elephants. And this... Uh, all 18 of those goats powering this elephant push. You turn your goats into elephants. And villagers... No, same thing with the... Uh, we saw the archers... the elephants against the archers. Elephants can actually fight villagers a bit better than rams could, but vills still can turn and knock them down. So, this has been cleaned, but there are still some camels running around. Oh, I guess the other difference is you can't garrison villagers inside of the elephants like you could inside of the rams. That would be really cute, though, if you tried to garrison the vills, and then instead of a garrison flag, you just saw the vills sitting on top of the elephant. <laughs> but you uh, you can't go for the Huang-like strategy of putting the vills in the ram to ungarrison and repair. Anyway, we saw Yo sending that vill over. He built a couple houses and a siege workshop, so he's not going to let his teammate completely die. Uh, Cyan will get that wall up, and this purple mangonel here from Yo will help to stop other elephants from breaking in through the wall. But still, we have Stray Dog up to the Castle Age, whereas Bad Koala is still stuck in the Feudal Age, adding in a market right now. And if you look at his resources, he has a lot of gold. He could buy himself up, but he's still very far behind our Vikings player. And on the other side, looks like... Uh, looks like these Turk players are just kind of 2TC booming behind the Janissaries. Oh, look at that, Tim! Must have broken into Pal uh, Paladin's base. Maybe he went for a petard. And now Orange has had to send his Janissaries over to try to clean this up. Looks like he has some Janissaries out here as well. Paladin, his TC blocked the gate, so he deleted the walls and the Janissaries left to try to path their way in. That castle there will trap the Janissaries in, but this will be a good bit of idle time. Won't be able to surround that Polvark with farms until the Janissaries are cleaned up. The Poles have been a very good arena sim, just uh, their, their economy with these farms is insane. I think it's actually the best late game food bonus that the game has. And perhaps just the best late game eco bonus in general. Perhaps even better than uh, like Aztec Relics or Spanish Trade. Alright, ooh, it looks like the Manganel will be able to shoot at the archery range from inside of the walls. 
and we'll have a monk getting involved trying to convert these crossbows. And now with the knight crossbow combination, still no upgrades on the knights, but we still have a full boom from uh, from Yo as Bad Koala finally is up to castle, but our Teuton's pocket, Lix, is up to the Imperial Age, and we have four TCs here from Red, and that's a wheelbarrow upgrade coming in, and still we have those 18, 18 pigs 18 sheep-like animals inside those mills. Uh, and... Oh, Red even picking up a relic. And here comes another armored elephant. City. Nice healing there. But we'll have Imp from... Oh, we have... What is this? Tim trying to put down a castle as Orange and Grey go to Imp. And... Oh, he could actually lose these villagers. Is it? This could be a doubt castle from Tim. And Janissaries are still dancing. That castle is only 62% up. Uh, will that go up? Only five vills left, up to 75%. Looks like Orange isn't going to try to dive that, and Tim will get that castle up. But at the same time, it's now time for Blue Stray Dog. He's putting up a castle right at the front of Bad Koala's base. And again, with the Elephant and the Mangonels, Red's going to be making another breach inside those walls. This one Minkanel from Yo, once the castle goes up, won't be able to stop that breach, so the elephants and the camels will run in. Oh, and the Minkanel even runs inside to uh, be shot by the castle. Actually, it does manage to take out the Minkanel, though. Now, the difference is we do have a few crossbows here, and with, uh, what is that, 15 crossbows, we will be able to deal with camels, but not with elephants, not with Minkanels, and probably not so much with these crossbows supporting the Minkanels. The camels have to pull back. And, oh, I see green moving across the mini-map. Those are knights, soon to be cavaliers, along with the guilds from the Teuton's Pocket. Another forward castle from the Teuton's Pocket as well. But they see that castle's going up, so these knights are coming over here to triple-team Bad Koala. He's going to have a full rainbow inside of his base. As red, blue, red, and green all are here. The blacksmith goes down, the knights are in. And it's going to be a... 3v2 on this side when one of those two is already fairly far behind. Knight, the other Cavaliers will take out the Mangonels, and with only Castle Age Knights, Yo from the pocket has nothing to fight this. He's trying to build a castle of his own, trying to get some conversions. But I think Bad Koala is in a very bad spot. He has a second TC to the north, maybe he'll be able to garrison that and keep his hills alive. But here comes this Gurjara push with the Elephant once more, going for the TC. Crossbows had jumped inside to stay safe, but they'll have to run and be chased down by the Camels and the Cavaliers. There's one Mangadel inside of there, but that will just get taken out by the Cavalry. Oh, he gets the Monk at least. He's gonna trade the Mangadel for a Monk. Okay, that's the best he can do. He'll spin around and die. The Shravamps Riders still dodging that tower fire. Yeah, it looks like Bad Koala might try to run Vils. I don't think... Oh wait, he's gotten one Vil outside, so <laughs> he will not be defeated. He's deleting the market to make a path for the Vils to run. And he's trying to get there past the Camels. The Crossbows will try to head them yes. off. And will they all go down? Will he... Oh, he's getting close to being defeated. Yeah, he still has 35 vills. I don't know where they are. These ones have been taken out. So he has three, four vills outside. And the rest, he's got 24 up here. And he's down to 33. He might have a few more hidden somewhere. But he's trying to run. Uh, this, this is why you don't delete your back walls on Arena. You hide in the back corners there and try to rebuild a lumber camp. Anyway, on the right, looks like Orange has managed to take out that castle from Tim, and we'll be working on this castle from Lix. Remember, Lix did send his uh, cavaliers to rainbow the other side, so they were shorter on army here. Now these uh, paladins cavaliers do have the numbers advantage, even though they will be lacking upgrades and will be lacking in melee armor against the now paladins from the Teuton player. Both teams have Janissaries from the back shooting into this mess of units. A few cannons there. Cannons trying to target the Janissaries. And of course, no artillery yet. And it looks like this will be, well, fairly even, but Paladin has more Cavaliers streaming in from the back. And he just has the numbers advantage there. So even the Teutons with 
Uh, with looks like good upgrades. 2 plus 5, 3 plus 4. Can't quite overcome those numbers that soon. Lex really needs to get pop cap and get his army together. Looks like... Looks like Bad Koala down to 11-10 population, still struggling. He's rebuilt the TC, he's gonna be trying to reboom. There's another castle, a second layer of castles from Tim and Lix. They're gonna need to hold until the other side can win. Yo will have to hold 2v1 for a while and hope the other side can push. Crop rotation! Oh, crop rotation from the mill holding those pigs. The ultimate Gurjar's economy, getting those late game eco upgrades in case the game goes long. Now the hard part is that without Scion having a base there, the trade line is going to have to be much shorter, somehow getting into Yo's base if our southern team wants to trade. The northeastern team will have a much easier trade route from Tim's base to Blue's base, assuming that they can control the front of Tim's base and keep it secure. Uh, let's see, no artillery yet. And just another fight of Janissaries Cavaliers versus Janissaries Paladins. And again, I feel like Lix just doesn't have the numbers he needs to be fighting here. At 120 vils, but only has 15 Paladins here. Needs to get his production kicked in. He does have 8 stables, but needs everything grouped up. He's fighting in a bunch of different locations. Has some trebs with which he wants to treb this castle. But he doesn't have any halves near him to keep him alive. We'll try to use a few paladins. I mean, yeah, a few paladins to stop the cavaliers from sniping them. Or not, the paladins will just run away. But here come the cavaliers and a bit wasteful from Lix there, just losing the trebs. And cannons continuing to push in as we now have a couple of trebuchets from Orange also supporting the cannons. That's a lot of Janissaries there. 42. Elite Janissaries, and they can do a good job of supporting the Cavaliers in the fight against the Paladins. Tim doesn't have the same numbers, only 19, and his castle is going to continue to be pushed. He's just building more castles behind it, but now the rainbow is coming to the other side as Red is sending over Shravamsh Riders, and it looks like Yo is slowly losing ground. He has a lot of halbs there, but now he somehow needs to counter Shravamsh Rider and Arbs as these uh, Shravamsh Riders are riding all across the front of his base. He still has a castle to defend, will be building some siege and some scorpions. And now the paladins are moving in, trying to jump on top of this siege here. Looks like Paladin had sent cavaliers over to the left-hand side, but in doing so, has abandoned the right side. Aaron's trying to <laughs> add palisades to protect the trebs, but not there in time. And now 51 elite Janissaries, but they're going to be against Ravamsh Riders. They'll be dodging some of those Janissary shots. I guess there's too many Janissaries to dodge all of them. But with Tim in the back, they can start pushing this. And we'll look at those numbers. Slowly, slowly getting killed off as the Riders are coming in and the Paladins are coming in. Trying to sit underneath three castles with those Ravamsh Riders. Surviving three castles and Janissaries. Finally going down, but dodging a lot of arrows in the process. I think they'll finally, finally be taken out, but that's a lot of Janissaries lost. It was up around 50, and if I can double click, I uh, can't double click this castle in the way. He's now down to 20 or so, and that's not really the big mass you need to fight Paladins. Meanwhile, the Paladins can take out the castle, as the cannon, still without artillery though, is in from behind. And I think the momentum from when Paladin, somehow his team still had the score lead, came over here. It doesn't feel like they're winning. Well, I guess he is somewhat cleaning up the base in front of Yo. The Poles will have lots of food. And still, the Cavaliers should do well against the Elite Shravam Triders. Right? Yeah, they still have more attack, more armor. Oh! Oh no! Bad Koala was trying to build a TC in the middle of the map and he got caught out by the Paladins. As we're having another Cavalier Paladin fight here. And I think the Cavaliers... Oh, it's right by the stables, though. They don't have the numbers and the production. Might not be the cleanest victory, but they should eventually clean that up. This will be back to 20 population for a bad Koala. He's eventually going to try to contribute to this game again. And as that gets cleaned up, score leads has now ever so slightly flipped. <laughs> bad Koala has another TC down here. 
Still would like to get that one up eventually, but the fight there had mostly been won by the Cavaliers. But here come Garjara's heavy camels to deal with the Cavaliers. And still Paladins from the pocket. As Red is now coming into the old base of Bat Wallet, building a castle on the golds, stealing the farms. Yo trying to send some halbs over. Those bills are actually uh, almost walled though, they didn't finish the wall. But, oh, look at those Shravops riders, even cleaning up the halbs. Oh, wow, those are some, <laughs> some useful cavalry there. I guess one siege they could eventually clean up. But they're still fighting as we're trying to get another TC here from Bat Koala. Up to 28 bills now. He's still trying to reboom as the guard tower push is coming in from Stray Dog. Adding in those guard towers to support the Arbalests. The guard tower... The guard towers there are meant to deal with the scorpions because the scorpions won't do much damage to them and they can still shoot and attack. Shavon Trider is able to clean up rams and even able to dodge the scorpion arrows. They're just going to get right on top of those scorpions and start taking them out. Onager from Stray Dog 2. Or not Onager yet, but Manganel. Onager is on the way. And there we go. And he'll use that also to fight against the Scorpions. As this TC will go up for Bad Koala. He will finally access some gold, but I don't know if he can spend it on anything. It's not like he's an imp and he died and already had the upgrades. He needs to get imp and do upgrades before he can contribute anything to this game. Yo, still trying to hold 2v1, but these towers are pushing him. On the other side, it is still a big Janissary versus Paladin fight here, as a few Cavaliers are added in. We have Tim, still no artillery, whereas we do have artillery from Orange, so that will make microing against those cannons a bit easier. As both Trex players adding in the Bombard Towers, but this one now has the extra plus three range. Look at how slowly those cannonballs travel. So these cannons do still outrange the towers, but only by one, so Tim has to be quite careful. He needs to use that range indicator in the settings. But he'll start taking them out. This one goes down, and this cannon needs to defend the tower. Oh, there we go, he got too close, and the tower gets a shot off. The cannon misses too. Yep, and he's way too close to it, and the tower gets one of the cannons. One of them goes down, but he's just going to continue building his towers. And adding in more cannons from behind. And this will just be a slow push as Orange will try to defend with one cannon, but doesn't quite have the numbers he'd want. He needs Paladins, Cavaliers to come in and save him again. So it's still 2v1. And on the other side, it looks like the not Bombard Tower push, but Guard Tower push. I, mean, I love that uh, Vikings architecture on the Guard Tower. Or that Teuton's architecture, too. I just, that, that's, that's one of my favorite Guard Towers. In general, I like the Guard Tower architecture from lots of civs. Anyway, yo, still trying to hold on. The list of elephants have been buffed recently, but I don't see him making any of them. Paladin will be adding two more stables for Cavaliers on that side. Has a couple of castles in the middle for protecting that gold. Could make Obuki if the Vikings player goes for Berserks. And we see Paladin with Light Cav. Probably will think about Wing Tassar soon, trying to get some raiding in. We'll at least clean up some of Tim's stone miners there. We'll stop the Bombard Tower push for a bit if Tim... Well, he's not going to run out of stone anytime soon. He has 1800 stone. He's just slowly pushing in with the cannons, cleaning the front of Orange's base. Scores still, despite Bad Koala being completely dead, are very close. And ooh, that cannon... Oh, one HP left. Tim finally does have artillery. So it'll be artillery for both players. 8 plus 2 versus 8 plus 4. I have to wonder where that extra range is coming from. Does that come from fletching? Tim doesn't have them. I guess it does. A fletching Vodkin. I'll have to check up on that. Anyway, we see this castle finally being pushed by the battering rams of Stray Dog. Yo, losing this foothold he had in front of his base. 
trying to mine, and as I said earlier, the markets here in the back of Yo's base, not very clean, trying to trade to the back of Orange's base. Whereas we have a, well, I'd say we had a better trade line here, but there's a bit of a traffic jam inside of those houses. <laughs> Stray Dog needs to delete some of his houses to clear, clear the trade. And even if you get all your blacksmith upgrades, you can delete that too. And they'll be trading fairly safely, though, to the back of Tim's base as they are also walling the center of the map. Walling up to keep the trade safe. And here are the Winged Hussars. It is Winged Hussars versus Shravamsh Riders. Oh, you can see the stats of both. 9 plus 4 versus 11 plus 2. I think the Shravamsh Riders probably win that, even though... Ah, actually, we have to factor in the splash damage, too, from if he gets the unique tech. That's probably a fairly close fight, but the Trap Triders just seem kind of amazing, so they'll probably win anyway. Oh, and here the full Gurjara's experience. Now we're seeing the Chakram Thrower. And that will be here to deal with the Halves. Yeah, first we had Throwing Axemen, then we had Kibeta Warriors, now we have Chakram Throwers. Another one of those melee dealing, throwing infantry thingies. Just gotta put them on an elephant, make a Mameluke style unit. Anyway, the Halbs are being taken out by the combination of Skirmisher, Arbalest, Pikeman, Shavam Shrider, and Frisbee Thrower. And more Trebs are coming in. Treb could be uh, dangerously close to the Rams, but the Frisbee Thrower should be able to deal with the Rams too. That'll go down, but Yo still managing to hold. He has the scorpions getting some good scorpion shots on those skirmishers there, but just won't have scorpions to deal with. Uh, or scorpions just won't be as effective against the Shravam Shriders. Still fighting over here. You know, the Winged Hussars do have an attack bonus against gunpowder units. Right, so against the... what's that? Plus four against gunpowder, they have the gunpowder armor class. So it could be fairly effective at dealing with the Janissaries. But then again, the Turks can also add in their own Hussars. here in front of the Janissaries. <laughs> well, I guess the Turk Hussar is definitely not what you want to use against Winged Hussar Cavalier and uh, Elite Janissary, that's for sure. But still, they're fighting under the Bombard Towers. I wonder, do they have the gunpowder? Yeah, these things should have plus four attack against the Bombard Towers, too. I don't know if you'd ever want to swarm them with Winged Hussars, but maybe it's something that wouldn't be awful. Anyway, these middle castles we have from Paladin now being squeezed from both sides. Bombard Towers from uh, from Tim and Treb from Stray Dog. That Treb will probably go down, but Castle's very low on HP, and the castle will go down first, not rescuing it in time. Paladins could have finished it off like we saw before anyway. Yo, still struggling as the Rams are pushing into his walls. They're gonna get into the trade in a moment, but we have... Bad Koala, up to 84 villagers. He is building a castle in the middle of the map. Could be denied by paladins. Yo, is he trying to trap those paladins with Khmer houses? Oh, I don't know, but this could be a potentially bad castle for Bad Koala as he's trying to stonewall in the villas. Oh, he gets the stone walls up. And paladins won't be able to stop that. The castle goes up. And he now has two town centers, somewhat safe. He's got more TCs at the bottom, and he is booming. But at the same time, this Chakram Thor Paladin army is pushing in towards Paladin's base, trying to get in through the north, and getting there right in the middle of the trade. Koala even has that market there. And I think the trade line now is in trouble. As this trade line still nicely walled off, has a gate in the middle of nowhere. This isn't walled, but still it's fairly safe. 
Uh, yeah, I still need to clean up this traffic jam of houses they're running into in the back. Maybe move some of those markets further. And the Janissaries will continue trying to defend this area from Orange. Looks like they'll probably clean this up just barely. But the trade is being taken out. And the trade is still figuring out how to pathfind. As now the front of the base where the trade is running is still under attack with an army of elite skirms from the Viking. And Orange is still holding. Definitely difficult to, pu to push someone who has artillery. But now the Paladins have run past the initial defense of towers and... Uh, of bombard towers and castles and are getting into the trade in the back and now all sides of the trade line Purple's base, Gray's base, Orange's base, they have units in them. They have trade carts that are going down and now the villagers from Orange will go down as well as this push making its way into U.S. base and there is the GG from Pat Koala as his team is going to resign and there we go 437 Shravant Riders versus 471 Cavaliers. All powered by those 18 pigs inside of the mills. Now I did some, let me tab, I did some quick math. And at 3.5 food per minute, with 18 of these sheep or pigs here, with a game that lasted, let's see, an hour and one minute, that's 61 minutes, that would be 3,843 food. Now, it's a bit of an overestimate because, of course, he didn't garrison them all right at the start. But that's a good bit of food. And, oh, I guess I casted this entire thing saying it was the RMS Cup 2 show match. Uh, maybe I should just cover that up when I edit so we don't get that wrong. <laughs> should disable the scoreboard. Uh, anyway, we look. Didn't have the greatest KD, but when you're able to spam units... That, uh, that can help. Bad Koala. Lost a lot. Uh, you can see this team. Like, they, they lost a lot of units. But, like, I feel like everyone has a negative KD almost, other than Orange and Stray Dog. Oh, Lix, Lix did fairly well. But now the Eco score. We see... You know, 48,000 food, that's nice. But still nothing compared to the Fulvark farms. Those things are just incredible. <laughs> 65,000 food for Paladin. Not enough to win in the game, but he, he definitely spammed many Cavaliers. And yo, with the Khmer going for that super fast castle time, but... Fast castle from Red, too, with the, that extra food. Anyway, I thought that was just a fun little sling that I saw. The, these guys like to play 4v4s a lot, so I'll try, I try to cast them when I see them. So, thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.